Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flannel Channel. Today I'm using some very simple homemade tools to try and diagnose what's going on with the engine on my truck. I'm getting some fuel in my oil and that's never good on these big diesel trucks. So stick around, I'm going to try and show you how I diagnose what's going on and then show you the repair from start to finish and hopefully everything goes quick and smooth and we can get this thing back on the road and making money in no time. So stick around. Okay, so let me tell you just a quick rundown of what this truck is. This is the one that I drive daily. Uh, it's a 1997 Kenworth W900L, and it's got the Cummins N14 in it. It's got a lot of miles on this thing. It has been rebuilt once already, uh, but it is getting up there in age. And uh, so in doing my pre-trip every morning, I started noticing that on my dipstick, my oil level was slowly climbing day after day just very very little but it was enough to make me go hmm I wonder what's going on so I told the boss about it and he said you know what why don't we take an oil sample we'll send that in and see what's going on because my coolant level wasn't going down I wasn't noticing any other issues or problems with this thing but it turns out we got the, the results from the oil test back and it had some fuel in the oil and so what that tells us is that most likely we have either injector o-rings or a crack cylinder head on this thing probably we don't know that for sure but that's what we're going to try and diagnose here today and figure out what's going on so um, if you hear any background noises in this video today it's extremely windy outside today so the shop and and the big bay doors and things like that are kind of making some weird noises so anyway if you hear anything that's what's going on this tool here is uh something that was made by my buddy mark uh, he loaned it to me and we're gonna use it to pressurize our fuel system and that'll help us diagnose where we have fuel leaking into our engine oil um, and so I'm going to start by putting some dye in my fuel and then uh, we'll probably run the engine for maybe 30 seconds something like that and get that dye up into the top of the cylinder heads into the injectors shut the engine off and then we're going to disconnect our high pressure feed line and our return we're going to plug the return line off with one of the plugs in the kit here and then we're going to thread this uh, it's basically just a piece of like brake line or fuel line uh, we're going to thread that into the back of the cylinder head and this is a air pressure regulator similar to what you would find on like a, a paint gun something like that okay with a small gauge on it and we're just basically going to add shop air to our fuel system and we're going to pressurize the fuel system we're not going to get crazy with it we're not going to max it out or anything like that we'll probably stick at like 40 or 50 psi Okay, and then um, I'm gonna pull off my uh, jakes and we're gonna look down inside the rocker boxes and we should be able to listen and watch for air bubbles and we're also gonna use our uh, black light and we're gonna look for dye around those injectors and then hopefully uh, we don't see any hairline cracks in the cylinder head. If we do, then we know we're gonna be changing the cylinder head this weekend and um, we have a separate spare N14 sitting outside with um, some good heads on it. Uh, so I'm not afraid at all to, to put used parts on this thing because sometimes uh, a cylinder head that's still in good condition can be better than a reman one that you get from who knows where that's been repaired <laughs> once, twice, three times, whatever. So anyway, that's uh, the, the long and short of what we're gonna be doing here today. Uh, is just using this very simple tool to pressurize our fuel system, try and find the leak, and then we'll dive into it and fix the problem from uh, the parts that we have available to us because uh, supply chain stuff is an issue right now too. So getting gaskets, getting O-rings, stuff like that sometimes takes a few days. And um, so hopefully everything goes really smoothly and we can get all the parts that we need and get this thing back on the road. So. 
pressure wash off some of the worst of the dirt and the oil and grease and things like that that are under here because we're going to be getting uh you know a lot of these pieces on the top of our engine taken off so i like to start with things as clean as i can so let's get to it let's get washed up and uh move over into the main part of the shop get ripping into it here we go so i'm going to get my trailer unhooked i'm done hauling loads for this week and uh we're going to get the truck bobtail into the shop and figure out why we're getting some fuel contamination in our crankcase. Um, I'm not going to bore you with all the details of unhooking uh, a frameless end up like this, but maybe you can see I got it backed into a concrete bunker that we have here and that makes it really, really nice because in springtime, you know, you tend to get some uh, soft ground sometimes and you really don't want to have a loaded trailer like I have with the landing gear sink down into the ground. So we got a nice concrete pad to back into here. And so I'm gonna crank that down, unhook all my airlines and electrical and hydraulic hose and get this thing inside. And by the way, I know that uh, there's plenty of rust on this engine. Coolant pipes, intake pipes, the block itself, there's flaky rust everywhere, and it's fine. It's a Midwest truck, it's got a lot of miles on it. So, it's okay, if it's, it's leaking, we'll fix it. Don't worry, it's okay, you can, you can put it in the comments if you want to, because it helps the video, but you know, I got it. Don't worry about it, it's fine. Let's rip into it, here we go. All right, so we have our feed line taken off right from the fuel pump here to our T, and this line goes forward to the front head. This goes rear to the rear head, and then we have our return line capped right here. It's our return line from the back of this cylinder head back here. So now we should be able to hook up our tool, which is right here, and pressurize the system. We're gonna watch down inside there and watch for air bubbles. We're gonna listen for leaks and we're gonna look for dye up inside there. Okay, so with regulated shop air attached to it, we could hear immediately the foaming and the bubbling from this injector right here. I don't know if it's gonna show up, but we have bubbling and you can hear it. Yep. All right, so we're going to pull this injector out around either side of the spring up here. There it came. Yep, just like that. Or should we pop new O-rings on and then pressurize it again and see if the bubbling goes away? That's a great idea. With new O-rings? Wouldn't be out anything by trying that. Yeah. Oh, I know. It sure would. Dumped your coolant out for nothing. Got all excited. There it is. It's still coming out a little bit somewhere. It changed, but it's not up here anymore. If we trust the gauge, that's eighty PSI. Still leaking. You hear it? Okay. All right. Should 
Shoot. Yeah. Well, now we know. I'm glad we got to that point. I'll sleep well tonight. Yeah. Yep. Bring that bring that motor in. Get the head off and Yeah. Put this one off. I don't okay. think it'll be a big deal. Yeah. Our parts engine we brought in from outside and it's got a head that looks really good it's cleaning up nice there's my old one that we pulled off and everything is prepped here new gaskets on getting my head bolts ready to go and uh, bolt this thing on and get back to it So now that we have our head and our rocker boxes on, we have our new O-rings on our injectors. And so the fuel system should be all tightened up. And uh, before we go any further with our reassembly, we're gonna stop and do our pressure check again with our tool and make sure that we don't have any more leakage before we continue on with our reassembly. So here we go. Okay, there's 120. That's the sound of success. Yep, I don't hear a thing. Awesome. All right, continue on.
a successful test drive. That is awesome. And we're very thankful and very blessed to be able to do work like this on our own trucks over a weekend and get right back into work Monday morning again and the truck can go back to making money. Um, we got our cylinder head swapped out, whether it was a cup issue or a crack somewhere, not really sure, but we got fresh gaskets, O-rings on the injectors, everything's holding pressure. Um, we got our oil changed, no fluid leaks, no weird noises, everything's running awesome. So I'm gonna put a couple tires on the front of this thing, probably polish up some wheels, get hooked up to my trailer and we'll be ready to go back to earning money again. But thanks so much for following along on this episode. Uh, if you want to interact with me, I'm not active in the comment section here on YouTube and I'm really not on Facebook anymore at all, but that'll redirect you to Instagram and that's where I spend most of my time. It's at flannel underscore Philip on Instagram. I'm also uh, occasionally on Rumble, Getter, Minds and, and things like that, just kind of as backup platforms to try and spread out some of the content that you see. If you like what you're seeing, you know what to do. You don't need me to beg you for it, but thank you for supporting the channel. It's growing like crazy. I've got more content coming up on uh, additional truck shows coming up. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some more uh, pinstriping on my truck, some more polishing and things like that. So yeah, all kinds of fun stuff. Hope you dig it. Thanks so much, everybody. Peace and grease.